The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi everyone and a big welcome to today's webinar, How to Use Real-Time Visualizations Throughout the Entire Architectural Workflow, which is brought to you by Enscape. Uh, my name is Gemma De Silva, I'm part of the Enscape team, and today I'm joined by Dan Stein, who is Director of uh, Design Technology at Lake Flato Architects. They're actually based in the US, which means it's pretty early where Dan is right now, it's 7am, but uh, I know Dan likes an early start, so it's all good. <laughs> So um, Dan and I have been working with each other for the past year now. He's been helping to write some great posts for our blog, which I will share with you via the chat pane a little bit later on. Um, and he's been using real-time visualizations as part of his design workflow for quite some time now and using Enscape specifically for the past five years. So he really does have um, plenty of use cases to share with us, which is great. But before I pass over to Dan, I just wanted to say that today's webinar will include a few slides, um, but we'll also spend a lot of time in Enscape as well, so you can really see how a real-time rendering tool works. Um, and we'll also have time for Q&A. So if you have any questions throughout the webinar, feel free to pop them in the chat pane. I'll keep an eye on those. And then at the end of the presentation, we'll have some time to answer your questions then. So with that, I am going to hand over to Dan. So thank you very much, Dan. Take it away. <laughs> Thanks, Gemma. Thanks everyone for attending my presentation. Um, so first I'll just give a quick introduction to myself and, and the practice that I work at here in the US. So I am a registered Wisconsin registered architect. I teach graduate architecture students at university. I've written 14 textbooks. One of those books uh, on Revit is the number one Revit book in North America. I write uh, blog posts for my blog BIM chapters. And as Gemma just mentioned, I also write uh, occasional posts for Enscape, and I've presented uh, around around the world in Australia, Singapore, Europe, Canada, and uh, all over the U.S. I work for Lake Flato Architects, based here in San Antonio, Texas. It's currently ranked as the number one firm according to Architect Magazine's 2019 Architect 50 list, uh, and I. Just, I, I'm fairly new to the firm. I just started earlier this year and uh, super excited to share that this year we, we won two more COAT, AIA COAT top 10 awards and that brings our total to 13 of those awards. You can see our Twitter handles up there at the top. So my personal one and the company one. So feel free to to share that on social media. Should have added the Enscape one too, of course. Um, so Enscape, uh, uh, this presentation is gonna be a high level overview of all the different things that you can do with Enscape, but it's worth pointing out first off that Enscape works with a number of different design platforms, which are most of the popular ones that exist out there in architecture. So Revit, SketchUp, Rhino, ArchiCAD, Vectorworks. Uh, today's presentation is going to be primarily showing Revit with, with Enscape, but the beauty of uh, the Enscape uh, ecosystem is that everything I'm gonna show you can totally be done in all of these other platforms. And in some cases, there's actually even more you can do outside of Revit because of Enscape's custom material library that exists. Uh, one nice thing that Enscape offers for those new to Enscape or even potentially these design platforms is on their website, you can download a sample, a native Revit, SketchUp, Rhino, ArchiCAD, Vectorworks sample file. Uh, today I'm gonna be using the Revit sample file in the upper left here. So I'm gonna be using this file. So you can download this file. I've, I've made a couple of tweaks that I'll mention uh, during the presentation. So you know what's different, but you can download this file and try all the things that I'm about to show. So we're gonna get started um, in our overview. There's not gonna to be uh, too many slides. We're gonna do most of this live in, in the software. So at the end, when you have questions, we can also potentially try some things out just to show you. But um, we're gonna look at different things in which, different ways in which you can use real-time visualization throughout 
the entire design process. So I actually um, listed different phases of the project. These, these happen to be more of the, the UK phase naming, but of course project procurement is, is going after the job and winning a commission. Concept design would be equivalent to schematic design here in the US. Spatial coordination would be design development. Technical design would be construction documents. And then of course, construction and use, the projects completed. So we're gonna go through different ways in which you can use vi real-time visualization throughout these different phases. But of course, the really interesting thing is that you can mix and match everything I'm about to show you with whatever's appropriate for you. All of these things that I'm about to show, I've personally done on projects at different points in, in a projects phase. So we'll go ahead and get started. I'm actually gonna just switch over and, and get Enscape opening real quick, and then I'll come back to these bullet points. So I've opened this sample model. I'm gonna to switch to a 3D view. And then on the Enscape tab, I'm simply gonna click Start. So while that opens, I'm gonna quickly go back and talk about the points here that we're gonna discuss. So project procurement, this is the idea of winning work, uh, going after new work, and interviews with clients is a great way to use real-time rendering to maybe tour a previous project that you've done. Of course, actual photos would, would likely be included of that real project, but to convey your technical uh, expertise to the client without even really having to say it by touring a project in real-time rendering mode if, and um, you know basically just showing your technical capabilities of, of modeling and, and presenting information even though this building may already exist. Um, and then this idea of web hosted models and ease of use will also be discussed. Um, so when I talk about web hosted models I'm gonna open up my browser real quick. And with Enscape, you can actually publish your model to the cloud. So you can send somebody a URL, and this again could be a client or a, or a prospective client that you want to share a project. Maybe it's a school and you want them to see the pool that you designed for the school and the pool equipment room so that the client and their their head maintenance person could look at this model and really have impressed upon them the quality of the design and how thoughtful everything was in terms of uh, clash, you know, clash coordination. So in, in just a few moments, this, this model opens up and now we're in this full version of the model, which we're looking at in a browser. And this computer wouldn't have to have Revit it wouldn't have to have Enscape, and it's it's completely navigable. So we can browse and we can even adjust things like the time of day by a shift right click. And this is using uh, basically just web technology. So I'm just gonna set this up real quick just to show one really cool thing that I think is amazing. So here's a reflective light fixture and watch the reflection. This is, this is what real-time rendering is as we change the time of day. In the reflection, we can see the clouds moving. So that's uh, pretty impressive. Now we're gonna switch to Enscape. So we basically just opened Enscape for those of you who may have just logged in at, at the last moment here. Uh, we opened this sample Revit model that we I downloaded from Enscape's website. On the Enscape tab, I hit the play button, which then opened up this real-time rendering environment. So I'm just gonna double click. And I personally really like to use the 3D connection, 3D mouse to navigate a scene. It just provides a lot of control with, with just your single, typically your non-dominant hand. So we 
we can start to navigate and now we're doing this in the context of of winning work but it's also just a great way to start out and show you like uh the, just the intense quality and smooth uh workflow that you can experience and this again would be the idea of taking a client through an a previous project so if you design uh, single family residence, you could take a client through this space, another home that you've designed, and impress upon the client your design capabilities and your technical capabilities. If you look closely out the window, you can actually see the trees are gently blowing in the wind. So that helps to add a lot of liveliness to the scene. If I shift and right click again, you can see the, the highlights on the leather chair change and the shade and shadow changes. So really quite, quite beautiful. A great way to convey the design intent to the client. There's auto exposure. So as you get out of the sunlight, the, the lighting automatically updates. So this allows you to navigate scenes that may not have lighting fixtures in them yet, or even plenum spaces if you're doing uh, visual clash coordination, just looking for things where a duct might go through a beam or, or whatever. But um, Again, just a, a really nice way to present a project and, and try and win a commission. So doing it live on the screen like this or sharing a, a web hosted link that Enscape hosts for you. It's just a simple export to web and Enscape uploads it to their servers and gives you a URL that you can share with somebody. All right, so now I'm going to switch to our next topic. So concept design. There's some really great opportunities that the design team can do when they're using, uh, when they're early on in the design phase, basically looking at massing, maybe doing energy analysis against that simple massing to, to consider orientation and inciting. Um, as well as daylight studies. And then uh, a couple of interesting ways of using real-time rendering at this phase are the Enscape's white mode feature, and then also creating an MP4 animating the time of day that you could share with the client, for example. So we'll go back to Enscape in Revit, and I'm going to switch to this conceptual design mode. So maybe we have this massing model. And this is one of the things I've added to the sample file. So if you download the sample file, this, this won't actually be there. And then I'm also gonna tell Enscape to switch to that view as well. And at this phase, hopefully you're doing things like I mentioned, such as um, energy modeling. So with that simple massing, you can do this perimeter and core thermal zoning, uh, energy model using Revit and Autodesk's Insight uh, for energy analysis in the cloud. And then uh, for a model like this, if we switch over to Enscape, we can, we can look at it. Um, of course, we could change this color to make this model just, just white. But what's a really nice thing to do in Enscape, just to quickly get rid of any notion of materiality. Is open up Enscape's visual settings dialog and switch to white mode. So this switches everything to white, even the trees. Um, 
but what you basically get here is is something that the client won't get distracted about color or materiality. You can adjust the time of day and do uh, shade, shadow, and and daylight or uh, direct sunlight analysis or study. Uh, you can even then export a video of this. So I'm just simply going to hit uh, the letter K on the keyboard, and then I'm going to add two keyframes right on top of themselves. So basically we're gonna have a single point that we stand and then watch the time of day uh, change from this single point. So I'm gonna click on this keyframe and, and the whole presentation here isn't to train you how to use Enscape or, or Revit. It's mainly to impress upon you the, the things that you can do at different phases in a project. So I'm going to do these things rather quick and not spend a lot of time talking about them. So I can, uh, for, for keyframe one, I can specify when I want the analysis or the, the animation to start. And I'll hit apply. And then I'm going to go to keyframe two. And I'm going to switch it to something like 1600. And then I can also specify for the second keyframe the total duration of this animation. So I hit apply. And now I can preview this. So if I like what I see, then I can go back into Revit or SketchUp Rhino ArchiCAD Vectorworks and click on the render video command. And then what that produces, and in this case, it take, take about two to three minutes, it'll create this MP4 that you could then share with uh, a client or anybody on the design team that, that you wanna basically discuss the results of this analysis. Uh, one last thing to mention here in this uh, massing study mode, in the upper right, there's a couple of toggles, so fly mode, or you could toggle into walk mode, which essentially turns on gravity and, and sets your eye level at the specified height. And then you can also toggle into two-point perspective mode, so maybe you want all the verticals to, to be nice and vertical and not distracted or not warped. Uh, so that the client isn't confused uh, about whether something's perpendicular or, or sloped walls or not. So uh, so that's a quick look at what we could do in concept design or schematic design using white mode, doing some lighting daylight studies and uh, creating a video of time of day. There are, there's a third mode that's fairly popular in Enscape where we can look. So normal mode is what we we're typically in. White mode removes all notion of materiality, but interestingly enough, glass is still transparent and reflective. So that looks quite nice. And then there's a light mode, which provides a, a legend. And we see the lighting intensity and lux on various surfaces in the model. So in our next phase, spatial coordination or design development, we're refining the design solution. We have some really awesome opportunities to, to study materiality in real time. And you know, through this example I'm gonna show, would we'll also touch on the next point, this idea of having uh, on-screen de design charrettes. This could be for internal peer review and then finally, we'll talk about how we can share panoramas externally with clients, which is, is a pretty exciting thing. And we do that, we use that a lot at Lake Flato. So we're gonna go back into our model here. I'm gonna make sure I turn off white mode. And then I'm gonna switch Enscape back to the main model. I should mention uh, for this presentation, my computer setup, which is almost something, oh, something uh, somebody almost always asks, 
is uh, I have an RTX 3000 graphics card. And this is in a, a computer I actually did a review for on my blog, Dim Chapters, for a Dell 5750. So full disclosure, Dell actually gave me this computer to, um, to hope that I would say something about it in a presentation like this. But uh, I, in fact, do use this computer every single day. It's my main computer. So it's, it's quite nice. And it's actually what, what they describe as the world's thinnest, lightest, smallest 17-inch laptop. So it has a Xeon processor in it, so it works quite well for Enscape. So I'm going to hit H on the keyboard. Well, actually, I'm going to I'm going to delete all of the keyframes because we're going to do another um, video a little bit later. All right. So um, this uh, ability to study materials in real time is really really nice. Uh, I'm going to position this on the screen here so that that we can see uh, this this wood door and then the the panels for this wardrobe. We're going to look at adjusting that material. I'm going to go straight into Revit's material dialog, and of course I know what the material name is in preparation for this presentation. So there's a material in, in Revit called dark wood, and it happens to be applied to the door and the panels on the wardrobe. And in SketchUp and Rhino and uh, the other design platforms, you uh, would basically do a similar workflow. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use some of the built-in advanced materials that come with the newer versions of Revit. So I'm going to go to this replace this asset. So rather than loading a new material, I'm just going to redefine the render appearance of a material that already exists. So that that way, everywhere it's been applied, it will get updated. So I'm going to type wood. Actually, I'm going to type plywood. So I'm going to start with a, a really interesting, pretty pretty beautiful um, material, actually. And this wouldn't necessarily be where you'd use it, but this is a great example of uh, just the different tones and qualities of material. So I hit apply, and then almost instantly, you'll see it update in Enscape. So if we switch over to Enscape, um, you can see later when we get to a more like a semi-gloss type finish, we'll see hot spots on here for the light source behind us. Uh, but even here, you can see there's a little bit of light from the window, direct light. And it's really a, a nice matte finish. It looks like unfinished plywood. It's actually uh, quite beautiful. So this is a great thing that you can do with, with uh, just yourself at, at your desk with Revit on one screen, Enscape on the other screen, and you're just sort of visually validating material selections. Uh, but you could also do this with the, in front of the client or um, with your internal peer review. Another great material is this bamboo uh, semi-gloss material. So this has a, a similar tone, but a different sheen, just a, a really beautiful finish to it. So a nice clear coat type finish. And just like you would expect from, from different angles, you see the material represented um, uh, differently, depending on how the light's hitting it at, at an angle or perpendicular. Uh, there's some really simple things you can do in Revit in particular, if you needed to uh, rotate the material. So maybe you want the wood grain to go vertical instead of horizontal. So I was able to just quickly change that and see the result. So really, really quite beautiful. Uh, one more example of, of wood on the wall, just another one that I really like. There's a nice uh, mahogany finish. And again, these are all Revit's advanced materials. So these are 4K textures, they're, they're larger 
um, representations of the material <clears throat> so they don't basically look like they're they're repeating too often you can still sort of see a repeat here but um, as you just get in there and and look at this closely it's uh, just a really nice high quality material we can sort of right click and and hold shift to change the time of de uh, a day and again depending on the finish of the material which this material we could continue to adjust its settings to make it more uh, reflective and then uh, just maybe one more example here if we were to like look at the floor finish and uh, this one is also filtered by dark I'm going to go to flooring tile. So you can see the um, the quality of the material. Different portions of it are more reflective than others. We can see some uh, sh highlights from the different parts that are in direct light versus shade and shadow. There's some some really nice highlights there. And if we change the time of day, we can see that adjust. So quite quite nice materials. Well, one other thing that I hadn't mentioned is um, if you notice the television screen, I need to get a better example of like the evening news or something, but notice how that's actually a animated graphic. So Enscape supports the ability to have something like the news playing on a, on a television screen. So going back to our uh, highlights, our bullet points for this phase in the project, another thing that we can do is share panoramas with clients. This is uh, a really cool feature. And basically what this means is we position ourselves somewhere in a space, like this master bedroom. And maybe I'll hit the space bar to toggle on gravity. So I'm standing at eye height. And then over in, in Revit on the Enscape set of tools, I'll select the render panorama command. And ultimately what that does is it creates an image like this. It, it's basically like a flat earth image. And um, this is a similar image that a 360 camera would take, which uh, I wrote a blog post on Enscape site on how you can use that camera to take a picture like this of a real site. And then this image type can be used as a skybox in Enscape to provide a more realistic context for your project. So once you've rendered a panorama, you go to this manage uploads dialog and it shows you this scene that I just rendered. I'm like any good cooking show, <laughs> I'm not actually gonna take the time to render it because I just wanna convey all the, all the things in Enscape. So here's an example of the scene. We can just get a good quick look at it and make sure it's, it's uh, what we wanted. And then we can upload it to the cloud. Again, this goes to Enscape servers. They host it free of charge included in, in owning Enscape. Um, and once it's uploaded, like this other example here, there's a little cloud symbol. And then there's this really awesome QR code that you can download and present that on a screen at the beginning of a meeting. Uh, even right now, you could use your cell phone to snap a picture of this and open 
this panorama and have a look at it. Uh, you can also just download the file like the one I just showed you. I could copy this link and then jump over to my browser and <clears throat> paste that in or send it to a client. And so this doesn't require any sort of quality graphics card. Uh, I may not have mentioned this earlier, but even that web hosted uh, Enscape model that you can navigate in, that still requires, even though it's in your browser, a halfway decent graphics card. Whereas this is fully pre-rendered, this is not real-time rendering, this is a static vantage point that that's um, being presented, you know, as a 360 panorama. Um, and then taking a collection of these, you can use some different tools like KR Panel or Yulio to stitch multiple scenes together and then look at them in a, a Google Cardboard Viewer or an Oculus Go, which those are now becoming obsolete, but um, the Oculus Quest 2, for example, could work. All right, so fun stuff. Now, moving on to the next phase, we get into the more uh, refined version of the phase later in the project, technical design or construction document, uh, what I call here making it buildable and, and efficient. So visual design solution validation, walking through a hallway, for example, and, and maybe that the door into the master bedroom uh, you made it taller because there's tall ceilings uh, in. Uh, so maybe from, from this side, you, you make this door taller because you have nice tall ceilings in this room. But then um, as you're walking through this, this could be on your own or again, part of a, part of a peer review. Maybe you find yourself uh, coming down this hallway and I could turn a lot faster, but just to not make everybody nauseous, I'm, I'm doing it sort of slow and methodical. But um, perhaps looking down this hallway, then you realize, you know, if this door were, were taller from this side, then it doesn't align with this adjacent door. I literally had that happen once on, on a, a maintenance type project where there's, uh, it was a, a bus uh, metro transit facility and there was two overhead doors or garage doors right next to each other on a north and a west side of the building. And, and so, you know, they didn't line up and, and there was actually no reason for them not to line up. So it's just a great way to check things that some formal clash detection tool like Navisworks or BIM 360 coordinate aren't, are not going to find. Um, you know, glass glass into a, a toilet room because the wrong door type panel was selected, for example. Um, so another nice thing that you can do as you continue to develop your model and uh, prepare for a presentation to the client is saving favorite views. So if we go back to Revit and we switch to, let's say the ground floor and we create a couple of quick camera views. So we're, we're preparing for a meeting with a client and we wanna make sure we talk about this area, which is this uh, the kitchen. And then we wanna also make sure we talk about this, this living space. So we've just created two new views and Enscape allows us to basically favorite views because particularly if any of you work in Revit, you know that uh, by the time you get to construction documents, there's just 100 3D views and it, it becomes clutter and, and um, hard to manage. So Enscape lets you favorite views. Uh, as soon as I did that, a tab just appeared over here that wasn't here before. <laughs> and now we have this ability to jump to our talking points. Um, of course, when we created the camera, we could have adjusted the eye level, but not only does this show up, uh, in Enscape when it's running live, live synced to Revit, but it also shows up in an EXE standalone export, which is actually the next thing on my, my bulleted list. So quick note about that is export, and here's the web standalone that we create the browser version, 
But then there's also an EXE version, which is a lot more robust version of Enscape. You, you basically end up with an EXE file that contains your entire design model and enough of Enscape to actually uh, still have some controls to be able to switch to something like white mode, but not only that, to run VR. So, and I'll, I gotta go back to my list here for a minute. So here's the notion of, of exporting to standalone during this construction document phase. And then there's also this opportunity for VR. Uh, Enscape with just a single click allows you to enable VR if the computer that you're on has VR configured and you have a VR headset connected. It's just, you click that and you put on the headset and you're in VR. It, it actually takes hardly any time. I've, I've been able to get in VR in an almost $1 billion hospital in less than a half hour from opening the Revit model to opening Enscape to putting on the headset. It's, it's a quite easy process and that EXE supports that workflow. So what this means is you can have a, a really high-end desktop computer or laptop that has a RTX 5000 in a laptop or a RTX 6000 in a graphics card, so 16 and 24 gigabytes of memory, which Enscape really likes for big projects with 4K textures. And, um, and that computer doesn't even have to have Revit or Enscape on it. You fire up the EXE, you click enable VR where you've already connected all the VR equipment and, and you're in VR. It's, it's quite brilliant, super elegant, simple workflow. Uh, and then in VR, you also even have access to those favorite views with the controller. Um, and one thing that I've done when I have a client wearing the headset is I, I prepare them, but I can switch on the computer screen I can jump them to another spot and not have them walk down the hallway and awkwardly try and, and go up a utilitarian stairwell to get up to the next floor or, or even elevate themselves, you know, float themselves up through the floor, which can make people nauseous. Um, so you just mentioned, I'm about to jump you and then it just goes dark and then lightens up again and then they're in that new location. Uh, and then the last thing we'll look at in this phase um, is the ability to export a video. So previously we we're in um, sort of a mass mode. Oops. Uh, but now we can think about this idea of being in a, a more refined model. And perhaps we wanna create a video that we can share with the client and and so there are, there are places for real-time rendering and, and allowing somebody to go anywhere they want. Uh, at some points, you might wanna be more careful and curate the experience so um, people aren't going into the janitor's closet and asking, where's the mop rail? Because <laughs> that might never be there, but it's definitely not there now kind of thing. So we can curate that experience by providing a video and then maybe the client shares this with their client or their, their staff, for example. So I'm gonna go back into this timeline editor and I just simply uh, navigate through the project. Maybe I'll hit spacebar here to make sure I'm staying at eye level. And then I just keep creating keyframes as I move through the space. And it takes a little bit of experience and practice to get used to how often and where you should add keyframes. Uh, if we take a look back though, what's really cool is we see a history of the path that we're developing and where the keyframes are. And we can graphically click on those keyframes to get back into them and, and readjust them graphically. So I'm using the 3D mouse with my left hand, which is my non-dominant hand. And then I'm using my right hand to, to actually drive the mouse. So I, I have to hit the space bar to turn off gravity so that I can walk through the glass. So when gravity's on, you, you won't go through railings or glass or walls. 
So now that I've I've created this entire path, I can click preview, just like we did before. With the still in from one location, and of course, we can go in and adjust the overall time, so that that appeared to go fairly fast. So the total duration is showing up here in the lower right. So I could bump that up and then hit preview again. And then once we like it, we'll go back into Revit and hit uh, render video. So videos take a little bit longer because they're encoding an MP4 to create. But the end result is a super standardized MP4 file here that you can email or send a Dropbox link or host on, on a website if it's optimized in terms of resolution. So I'm gonna hit leave. Back here in Revit, here's the render video. So I won't do that right now because I've already rendered it. And, and like I said, that, that'll take maybe six to eight minutes, I'm guessing. But that also depends on in visual settings under the capture tab, we have the ability to specify the resolution. So ultra HD would be 4K. Um, and then this, this also applies to creating still images, um, which as I think of it, I really haven't uh, discussed that yet. So uh, in terms of controlling resolution, let me just go inside here for a minute and, well, actually, You can see how the water actually moves and um, there's some techniques to do some interesting things like make a, a splash of water and even include some some footprints and notice depending again on what direction you look at it just like physics you know the way things work in real life um, you can see the the wet spot more clearly depending on what angle you're looking at it but like uh, from this vantage point, if I shift and right click and, and go to nighttime, I just want to quickly mention that you see that the, the lights, so the light source associated with the Revit lighting fixture family ends up uh, being dominant and invisible. The lights are actually always on, but because of auto exposure, they oftentimes don't look like they are. Uh, Enscape has in its settings a uh, override to overpower the lights to make like hot spots still show up on, on the walls. Uh, but the cool thing too with Enscape is it, for, it supports photometry. So IES files, for example, from manufacturers to properly represent the light source and, and its distribution. Uh, so if we, we find a nice view like this that we want to just make a JPEG for a presentation or send to the client, we simply go to this take screenshot command and hit save. And depending on your graphics card, this this will take just a few seconds to make a, a HD image. And if I set it to ultra HD, it would be a 4K image. And I've, for the last several years, have used Enscape to render the covers on my Revit textbooks. And the publisher has a really high resolution requirement, as you can imagine, for a cover of a of a professionally published textbook. So that's where you can go go into the the settings here in Enscape on the Capture tab, and set custom and and type in. There is an upper limit, but you have and it actually when I'm hovering over this at the bottom of the dialog, it says uh, it's basically a eight eight K. Uh, image is the upper limit. And then there's also uh, some video export settings like frames per second and then uh, the panorama resolution. So super easy to use and um, and not only that when we talk about still images, um, Enscape has a whole series of, of settings related to camera settings. So the focal length and field of view and autofocus. Um, so if we we uh, turn off autofocus, uh, 
well, I'm getting off script there a little bit, so I'm gonna I'm gonna skip that right now. All right, so uh, visual design solution validation. So this just means walking around looking like you would in a building where where we as architects tend to be nitpicky about, oh, they didn't line that up very well, or I wonder why they did this. You have that same virtual experience with Enscape. We can save favorite views, standalone export EXEs. We can uh, explore the project in VR, either uh, as a, the design staff exploring it or, or with a client. Um, I've even had, um, during construction document phase, um, uh, VR experience with a client's client. I, I guess I'm going to get to that in the next video, in the next slide. So here we talked about videos, and this is just a slide highlighting uh, virtual reality. So um, virtual reality in this case is typically a tethered headset, um, HTC Vive or Oculus Rift. Um, uh, for I know, for example, that the the Vive has a wireless opportunity. Um, still requires the computer, a high-powered computer, but that really frees up the opportunity to do something like um, sit in a wheelchair or sit in a chair and look at the sight lines from a reception desk, for example, and even sort of slide that chair around if you have a larger play area. So during construction, we can present uh, oftentimes specific equipment and finishes aren't selected until the the contract has been uh, awarded and in during construction uh, vr and video for the client's client so this is what i was just about to start talking about a minute ago where if you're working for a developer uh, a developer's goal is to occu fully occupy the building with with tenants or people who are leasing space as soon as possible so they don't have space sitting empty. So I've, I've worked on a project where um, even before it was safe for potential tenants to go into the building, we were delivering VR experiences in the, in the architectural office and, and getting paid by the developer for that opportunity for their potential clients to come in and explore a space. And we had uh, context like the adjacent buildings modeled and a, a photosphere of, of the background um, so that when the client walked over to the and looked out the eight-story window they had a really good sense of, of what they would see from that particular location and then of course VR for marketing at uh, I've I've multiple times had VR at a groundbreaking ceremony. There's one on my website that I discuss on a, a large hospital project I worked on. And then when we get into the use of the building, there's also some interesting opportunities. So the architect and the contractor aren't involved anymore, but the client has that Enscape EXE. They could still do VR. And I've also done VR for grand openings, which is interesting to be in the actual space that you're presenting VR, but to be able to tell the story that during this project, we use this technology and that door that you can physically see right behind you or that window, we saw it in VR first and we can change it for free in VR or in, in the design phase uh, once it's built and the client walks through and realizes, oh, I don't like that that's expensive. That's going to affect the project cost and the project uh, schedule. Uh, so the budget and the schedule are affected and the design, um, you know, that could trickle into some other, you know, ceiling or soffit issue that's needed and result in a design compromise. Uh, this allows the building maintenance folks to follow pipe and duct runs or find column and beam locations or even access BIM data. So if we go back into Enscape, and we're in the home stretch here, uh, when you first open Enscape, whether it's uh, the live sync version to your design platform or an EXE, you actually get this really nice intuitive instruction uh, panel down here to tell you W to go forward and S to go backwards. 
and how to change the time of day and whatnot. Um, but one of the cool things you can do here, uh, these are the last two things that I'm gonna talk about and then we'll open it up for questions, uh, is we can list the BIM data. So just type B on the keyboard and then select something like this chair and here's all the information in this case from the Revit model, which could include cost if that information was entered, but it includes like, if I select the window, you know, it includes the, um, it includes the, the material for the glass and the area. And then finally, in addition to the BIM data, so I'm gonna type B to turn that off. Uh, there's also a C for collaboration. So if you're meeting with a client, we could capture some of their comments, like create new issue, and Enscape's gonna do a quick render of this screen to save what you're currently looking at. And then I can, I can note, maybe the client doesn't particularly care for this stool that we've selected, um, us, you know, presuming that this is the intended stool. So I'll, I'll type stool issue. So we're basically just quickly capturing cl client comments. And then change issue position. So I'm actually picking that chair and then hitting save. Now anybody who opens Enscape against this Revit model is going to see that um, there's also, for those who actually uh, work with BIM track, there's a tie-in to that as well. And that is a whirlwind version of my presentation. There's actually quite a bit more that could be presented, but uh, I'll open it up for questions now. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Dan. That was an amazing presentation. So much great information. Um, we have actually had a few questions come in. Um, the first one is about um, generating a video in normal mode. Is it possible to show a door moving as in like a sliding door opening for you to walk through? No, there's, there's not the ability to animate things like that. Um, <clears throat> but uh, typically you could have the door already open if you adjusted your family to be able to do that. But yeah, you, you pretty much have to be a ghost and either go through the door or prep the model such that the, the doors are already open. Fantastic, thank you. Um, now we have another question about normal maps in Revit. Is it possible to use them? Um, yes. Um, so Revit's advanced materials <clears throat> allows uh, normal maps and um, Enscape supports those as well in its material editor. But um, yeah, that's, they're, they're, uh, they're not used as fully as most uh, other um, applications like a, like a gaming environment, for example. Okie dokie, thank you. Um, I don't suppose you know the answer to this question. Um, I may have to get back to Ivan um, on email, but he's asking, do you know how long a standalone stays on an Enscape server for? <clears throat> um, I believe it stays there indefinitely um, as long as your your Enscape account is active. Uh, I've I've asked that question once in the past, and I imagine at some point they may change this if if uh, we all keep adding stuff there and never clean up after ourselves, <laughs> just like on our own office servers. But my understanding is that it, there's no auto purge. It's you delete it or you stop paying for Enscape and then it gets deleted as a cleanup. Brilliant, thank you. Um, another question here, are you using a space mouse for navigation today? I am, yep. Fantastic, this there you go. what I used, <laughs> um, for the wireless one. Oh, nice. Uh, let's have a look here. Do you always need a headset to view VR or can you use an app on your smartphone and have the experience on the smartphone instead of wearing a headset? 
Yeah, it depends on the software that you're using, but if you were to use the one workflow that I alluded to and one of the many workflows we use at Lake Plato, uh, if you render panoramas and then use another source like KR Panel or Yulio to host a, a series of panoramas, um, the Yulio app, for example, or hosting a KR Panel export on your website would allow you to just hold up your phone and, and look around. And then there's a toggle to go into um, uh, Google Cardboard mode. So you could drop your phone into a Google Cardboard viewer. So yes, there's there's ways of doing that. Brilliant, thank you. Um, what are the hardware requirements uh, for Enscape? Computer. Well, it's primarily GPU based. Uh, the, the CPU is used for opening an Enscape model, but once Enscape or an Enscape scene, once it's opened, it's all about the GPU. So I recommend, uh, for example, for an architectural practice that does, you know, uh, medium to high end work where you're, you're doing really complex, larger projects, something like a RTX 5000, mainly because of the GPU memory. You get 16 gigabytes of GPU memory. Uh, as soon as Enscape runs out of GPU memory, it disappears from, from the screen. So it, it likes GPU memory and you don't get that in the consumer cards. The consumer cards are great if, you, if you're really careful about cropping the model and, and curating it, but um, that takes extra time. So the extra cost for a for an architectural practice for a, the professional grade cards is well worth it. And then a RTX 6000 with 24 gigabytes of RAM in a desktop is what I've always used uh, and recommend for uh, full-blown VR. And I've just chatted out the, uh, the system requirements there. So if anyone didn't catch any of that, you can have a look on the website. Now we have another question here. Um, someone's saying, I have Enscape downloaded for SketchUp. Can I use the same in Revit? Or for Revit, yes. do I have to download Enscape again? Ah, there we go. Yeah, that's a great question. So when you install Enscape, it, it, it will install for all the design platforms that you have. There's only one version, of, there's only one thing you can buy from Enscape, which is beautiful. It's, it's uh, there's not all these different tiers and, and options. You, you buy one thing and um, you get Enscape for all the design platforms you have. And one of the things I, I really neglected to mention is this incredible asset library that they provide now, which you saw in the model, all the people and, and clutter and, and vegetation, all of that comes with Enscape for free. And they're continually adding. They just added uh, in 2.9 a whole host of uh, exercise uh, people or in equipment and, and people. And, and custom assets as well, uh, which is quite yeah, yeah, custom assets. There's this is a high level overview. So, like I said, there's so many more things we could have talked about. Uh, we're starting to develop quite the nice custom asset library at Lake Plato, including a live oak tree, for example, that's native to southern United States. Amazing, fantastic. Well, I think we'll leave it there. We've we've, we've had a lot of questions come in. Thank you to everyone who joined us. Thank you, Dan, for an amazing presentation and overview of Enscape. Um, I hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, one thing I will mention is that there is an exit survey that will pop up on your screens when you leave. Um, we would appreciate your feedback uh, if you have a moment to fill that in for us. And it also gives you the chance to um, opt in for a free trial of Enscape if you want to give that a go as well. So please fill that in. Otherwise, I just want to say thank you all for joining. Have a great day. Thank you again, Dan. And uh, we'll hopefully see you on another webinar soon. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.